This video is a quick survey of the most important types of aromatic heterocycles. Five-membered heterocycles other than parole include thiophene and furan. To generate thiophene, we replace the NH group of parole with a sulfur, and to generate furan from parole, we replace the NH group with an oxygen. In both of these molecules, one of the lone pairs on the heteroatom is associated with the pi system, while the other is located in an sp2 hybrid orbital, and you can see which is which in the orbital diagrams below, which show us the atomic orbital inputs to the pi molecular orbitals, along with the hybrid that houses the other lone pair. The lone pairs in blue are part of the pi system, while the lone pairs in black are located in sp2 hybrids and are thus part of the sigma system. Fused aromatic heterocycles consist of two rings, either two six-membered rings or a five and a six most commonly. Benzofuran is just furan with a benzene ring fused to this side of the molecule that I'm highlighting. An isomer of the molecule shown here involves fusing at the other type of carbon-carbon bond within this structure. Endol is analogous to benzofuran and involves parole fused to a benzene ring through the same type of bond, the carbon-carbon linkage closest to the heteroatom. As in the furan case, this molecule has an isomer which involves fusing a benzene ring to this carbon-carbon bond, and that's called isoindol. Benzothiophene is simply the sulfur analog, where thiophene is fused to a benzene at this carbon-carbon bond closer to the heteroatom. Quinoline and isoquinoline are pyridines bearing fused benzene rings, and they differ in the position of the fusion. When the carbon-carbon bond closest to the heteroatom is used for the fusion, we end up with quinoline, and when the carbon-carbon bond distant from the heteroatom is used for the fusion, we call this isoquinoline. We're going to look at two types of two-atom aromatic heterocycles here, heterocycles containing two heteroatoms. The first are called the azoles. All of the azoles include the carbon-nitrogen double bond within their structures, which we've seen as an electron withdrawing group. But they also include a heteroatom that's either an O2, S2, or N3 that we would consider electron donating. So in terms of electron density, roughly speaking, we might expect these to be about as electron dense as benzene. An important question with the azoles, especially imidazole, which contains two nitrogen atoms, concerns the basicity of the lone pairs on the two types of heteroatoms. Which heteroatom would we expect to be more basic on the basis of electronegativity and the nature of the electrons on these atoms, whether they're pi electrons or part of the sigma system? In fact, in all three of these structures, for reasons that will become clear later, it's the doubly bound nitrogen that's the most basic atom. I won't reveal the reason for this just yet, but if you understand the orbital structure of this nitrogen, notice they're all N2 nitrogens, it should be fairly clear why this nitrogen is much more basic than the oxygen, sulfur, or even the N3 nitrogen in these structures. The second important class of two-atom heterocycles is one that we've seen already, the diazines. Diazines contain two copies of the carbon-nitrogen double bond, and they differ in the positions of the nitrogen atoms. Pyrimidine has a metal-like relationship between the nitrogen atoms. Pyrazine has a para-like relationship between the nitrogen atoms. And pyridazine has an ortho-like relationship between the nitrogen atoms. Because these molecules contain two copies of an electron withdrawing group within their structures, all of these rings can be considered significantly electron poor. Even so, diazines find important places in chemistry and pop up in some rather unexpected places. For example, pyrimidines correspond to a class of nucleobases or nitrogenous bases in biochemistry. Pyrazines are byproducts of the Maillard reaction in cooking, so whenever you brown a piece of toast or cook something in the oven, pyrazines are generated and they're a component of flavor of toasted or roasted things. The last thing I want to look at are aromatic stabilization energies for some of these heterocycles. And while you should by no means memorize these numbers, there are some interesting trends we can pull out of this table that I want to highlight. The first is to note that benzene's aromatic stabilization energy is large relative to heterocycles, which tend to be lower. Parole, furan, thiophene, all these numbers are significantly lower than benzene's aromatic stabilization energy. The second thing to notice is that the fused aromatic heterocycles, at least the ones that we have data for, tend to have much larger aromatic stabilization energies than the monocyclic rings. Largely what's happening here is an additive effect, where indole, for example, enjoys stabilization from both its parole ring and the fused benzene ring. The same thing is happening in both quinoline and isoquinoline as well. Aside from this interesting observation of the large stabilization energies of the fused rings, 
and the large stabilization energy of benzene, which is the only hydrocarbon in this table, we really can't pull out any other useful trends from this data. Even so, in closing, I do think it's worthwhile to note that even the smallest of these, the 14.8 kilocalories per mole of stabilization energy for furan, is massive on chemical terms, since this is far, far more stable than any acyclic conjugated system with an analogous structure, for example. So aromaticity is a huge stability factor, even for these molecules with relatively low aromatic stabilization energy.